Now, West Coast region is the biggest region in the Gambia. After school, I've seen things happening in the community, untold stories, a lot of them. And I realized that we are sitting in a time bomb. If something is not done, then we'll not live in peace. So I decided to use the community radio as a tool to educate inform and sensitize the communities about the health implications of FGMC, that's female genital mutilation or cutting. There was an old woman, very old woman indeed, here called Nansimba. This old woman lives in Koloro, Combo East District of the West Coast region, and is the biggest settlement where this practice has been done. And she do cut young girls to earn a living without any medical know-how, without any health background, and she uses one razor blade on sterilized to cut several girls at a go with the pain, the anger on those girls crying. At the end of the day, there is no medication that is put on them to treat their wounds. They have their underwears, they have to urinate so that the urine can be able to touch the wounded part of it. You know, it's salty and they do cry. Some of them will not be able to urinate with the fear of the urine touching that, or the, the part that has been wounded. With series of sensitization, advocacy, the woman, the Nansimba, still the reluctant, because she's earning a living, thinking after this, what next, what I'm going to do to earn a living. Advoc you have, I mean, series of NGOs, and activists being engaged in sensitizing, as well as health workers. Health workers talking about inviting her in series of seminars to sensitize her, to talk to her. A lot of them indeed, not her alone, with her comrade. Because they are holding, I mean, a tradition. It's a cultural heritage. She er inherited that from her ancestors, and don't want to leave the tradition to go and die like that. Instead, she will also want to leave what she had inherited from her grandmothers, her mothers, to her daughter. So it's a process. It will be a long chain. When will that end? No one knows. How many girls, young girls will die? No one knows. So we decided to use the radio station to advocate and sensitize the general public more specifically, those living in Combo East District of the West Coast region. Now, I decided as a community radio, because it's a tool that is down there to the community. And most of the communities where this radio station are located, the communities listen to the radios and believe in us. Whatever we're telling them, they take us seriously, and they know that we're guiding them in the right path. So we have nine community radios in the country. All these nine community radio stations we decided to run simultaneous program at the same time, and no one will miss up anything in what we are trying to put across. Now we invited uh, the health workers. We invited also a woman from the Ministry of Justice. We have also invited at the radio station. We have a drama that has been set up by the radio station, and these people are from the radio station drama group. Because not each and everyone will be able to understand what we're trying to say in English or in our local dialects. Some people, they are, it will be very easy for them to get, up, to get the message when you dramatize things. So in doing so, we decided to have a drama group. And here you have a, 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 a mother with a husband, the wife and a husband. And these people are the circumcisers. 
who normally do the act of courting. Now, discussing here things that have, we have been discussing earlier on, on how to prevent or how to eradicate thoroughly this act of taking young girls without any medical know-how. Now, we also invited, despite, I mean, inviting also health workers and uh, also religious leaders, it's very important to also invite the, I mean, lawmakers. We decided also to have a, a woman who is working from the Ministry of Justice, as well as a health worker working for the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, who will be talking on the health, negative health aspect of it, of FGM, and the other guy from the Ministry of Justice who will be talking on the laws that have been put in place since November 2017 that prohibit FGMC, that's female genital mutilation, or cutting. Remember, when this old woman is cutting, she removes the entire parts of it. The parts that makes a woman to get the feeling. Everything has been removed when you are with your husband, you like like that, and the husband is very... Sometimes, if they are not getting any feelings, they, are, they tend to marry another woman who will give them at least the pleasure they, they want to have from a woman. So if everything is removed from you, and the man will keep on marrying, marrying, that's why sometimes you see in Af African context, some people marry one, two, three, up to four wives. Because their sexual desires are not met. So now, f away from that also, you have the religion aspect of it. The religion is saying, yes, you can cut. Islam, you can cut. Did it say cut all? No. Just a small part of it. So you see. Now, the Nganzimba is relying solely and wholly on the Islamic point of view as well as their beliefs and culture. But the law is saying, no. Whenever you dare witnessing people discussing about taking their girl child to mutilate her, or you participated in an event whereby you, you, people are just uh, doing some ceremony here and there, or you witnessed, or you saw them, and you did not report it to the nearest police station or, uh, I mean, authorities concerned, you will be put in jail. You'll be fined and also put in jail. Lawmakers have made the law. Did they go to the grassroots level to disseminate this information? our local people so that they will know where to have to have access to justice if needed they didn't do so as a community radio working for the communities we decided to invite them to inject them so as to better educate women also to know their rights that yes if something happened i can have justice i can go and have justice from x y and z so that's why this, she's Bafo Jeng, working for the Ministry of Justice, talking about the law implications, what the law says. This other man is Masley. Those from the Gambia, they recognize them very well. This is Masley. He's from the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. And now, with the advent of the new Gambia, yes, people are saying we voted for a change change of regime, change of a system. Did that mean that people have to, I mean, undo the law that has been put in place by the former regime? Other people are saying, yes, we voted for that. We want to still continue doing the practice to earn a living. Activists now who have been engaged in sensitizing, advocating, like uh, we have now the minister, the vice president, strong advocate for the FGMC. We have the, now the newly appointed Minister of Women and Social Welfare. All those people are strong women, just to name a few, advocating them. Now they are in top positions. And still, we have seen people smuggling. There are some pockets of people doing the act, saying it's the new Gambia, they voted for a change. This is part of them, it's part of their culture, it's part of their belief. But as media practitioners, people working with community radios, we said, no, a law is a law. There is nothing like you voted for a change. You voted for a change, but you do not vote to change the law that has been there, protecting young girls, young women. And sometimes you also see that 
young girls are forced into marriage. Yes, because if parents don't want to see their girl's child get pregnant early on, and uh, they push them into marriage. So all those things are issues that really women or young girls, they are comforted with in our country. And as broadcasters, we said we can't stand and look young girls and women not having access to justice. So that was the time bomb that we've been sitting on top of, and we need to defuse it. So, as a community radio and also a broadcaster, we have been able to talk to the Nan Simba. We invited her at the radio because if you, talk, you take someone to court, the person may be fined and put to jail. But your relationship, your ties, because we know each other. The Gambia is a very small country. Each other, we are related. So, at the end of the day, if I take Nan Simba to court, will that solve the problem? No. Yes, she will be put in jail, she will, put the, she will pay the fines, but our social cohesion, relationship, everything will be in mess. Her family members will not talk to my family members. There will be that. We'll be enemies for the rest of our lives. And there will be this infighting. So the radio was used as a tool to reconcile people, to bring people together. And at the end of the program, she decided to drop the knife and shake hands. And it was a live radio program where people were calling, I mean, telling them their anger, their pain, their sorrows. And after listening to those pain, anger, she decided to drop the knife and venture into small business to earn her living. Nansimba now, is an advocate going around village after village to talk to her fellows to drop their knives so as to enable young girls to live a dignified life and also have access to justice is needed and she's ready to take anybody to court if you found wanting doing the act. So with the radio, community radios and the radio in particular are a very strong tool to bring Peace in our community. Justice in our community without going to court. Basically, in a nutshell, I want each and everyone here, let us empower our communicators. Let us trust our broadcasters. Let us use our radio station and television as a tool to reconcile people and also for justice, not taking them to, dragging each other to court. At the end of the day, you will not achieve your goal. Your goal is to see every, each and everyone live in peace, unity, and harmony. Dragging someone in court will not solve the problem. Radios are the tool to solve everything, and we live in harmony.